Hi, my name is Eric Stinson, and I'm from Juniper's product marketing team. Today, I'm here with Vijay Paul, our director of engineering for our Junos Evolved uh, network operating system, which is our cloud op optimized network operating system. Uh, and we're starting a series of vlogs. Uh, we already did one, and, and we're going in and digging in now to um, some of the important aspects of Junos Evolved. And today, uh, we're going to talk about state distribution and, and why that's important. So welcome, Vijay. Hey, Eric. Um, so the first question is, uh, you know, why did we see state distribution is so important in Junos Involved? Yeah, so state distribution is uh, almost the central uh, spinal system that um, all the applications build on top of uh, in, in a network operating system, because that's the conduit through which all information exchange happens in that system. So how you build that system determines the high availability characteristics of the system, uh, the performance aspects of the system, the modularity aspects of the system in terms of how faults are isolated, et cetera. So when we built the system, we uh, first and foremost wanted to make sure that we have extreme visibility into what goes on uh, in the system. Because this is this one, one single conduit through which almost all information exchange happens. It's sort of the highway of the network operating system. So you want to have appropriate infrastructural controls so that you have visibility into what's going on in the system. And the other aspect that we wanted to um, uh, really enforce in the system is make sure that we take this problem uh, into a user space play where you're not getting uh, uh, into the business of uh, moving the state into an environment like the kernel, which is difficult to work with, right? Uh, so so uh, this, this, this sort of uh, fundamentally decides uh, for you what, the, what a lot of attributes of the system end up being. Yeah, that, that totally makes sense. You know, visibility is always key. It's been key for years, yet, you know, a lot of things um, don't have enough visibility now. So it's great that, you know, we really focus there um, to create that visibility. Um, so can you just dig into some of the details of our implementation and how that benefits our customers? Yeah, absolutely. So if you look at uh, 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 the, the communication system that we have, we use a state-based pub sub system, something that we also call a data-centric pub sub system. Uh, by that, I mean uh, all exchanges that happen in the system are at the unit of state. They're not really message exchanges in the system. There are no point-to-point -point communications between uh, demands in the system. All interactions are through this pub sub system. So from that falls out some of the fine properties like uh, anon anonymity between the consumer and the producer. The producer or the consumer don't need to be aware of faults that happen in each other because there is a level of abstraction that keeps faults isolated and contained within, within the domain of the pub sub system and the producer or the pub sub system and the consumer, right? Uh, there, there's essentially no time coupling. At the same time, uh, and these are properties that come as is uh, the moment you decide that you're gonna build a pub sub system. Additionally, what is important to note is the system is state-based. Uh, and that's because uh, fundamentally on a router class system, the only thing that you can put bounds around is state. You cannot put bounds around the number of messages that you're going to see when there is a network flap, right? So if you want to build a system that is going to be reliable and is going to perform in a way that uh, scales uh, well, you're going to have to build a system that uh, uh, uses the unit of operation as state and not as messages. So if I, if I may take an example, uh, if you have a system with... Uh, multiple consumers and different consumers have different workloads put on them. Uh, it's, it's possible to en envision a scenario where there's a fast changing interface state. Say there is a bad fiber and uh, uh, the link is continuously flapping, right? So uh, if, if you build a system that does not operate at the unit of a state, you're going to have a, a case where you have a slow consumer that's not quite able to keep up with these uh, interface flaps and the subsequent churn of events that happens unleashed by that. Uh, but if you have a state-based system, all you really end up doing is publishing the uh, latest update or the latest version of what this interface state looks like, right? And that's all the consumer needs to know. So all the previous uh, exchanges or transactions or transitions in state are not really relevant as far as this consumer is concerned. Uh, so you're effectively able to compress out a bunch of uh, notifications or uh, events that are not really of interest anymore, right? 
uh, to a slow consumer. So you don't have systems which end up building infinite queuing. So this is a very important property uh, for systems to have a uh, scalable behavior. Yeah, thank thank you, Vijay. That's that's absolutely um, important. Uh, you know, as you know, many of our customers, uh, particularly in, in the cloud space, uh, they like to um, you know implement their own applications. They like to integrate things um, into the system, which you know we're we're very happy to and we allow. So, you know, how can they take advantage of um, that pub sub system for uh, their own applications versus just our internal applications? That, that's a very interesting question. And this is, uh, this is sort of something that falls out of the approach where you formalize all interactions in the system uh, uh, using this PubSub uh, model-based system. Right? So what, what, what I mean by that is uh, all interactions anyway have a structured schema, right? And, and uh, it's, it's not a case of, uh, you know, Op- opaque blo- blobs of information floating around within the internal uh, internals of the system. Uh, these already have a well-defined uh, structure. Now, what we have done is taken this a step forward and uh, providing gRPC-based APIs using which you can tap into this pub subsystem. Right? So uh, what that effectively means is you can uh, conceive of external applications written by Juniper or by our customers using these well-defined APIs that let you uh, subscribe to state information from this pub subsystem as you would if the application were a native application on the box, right? So that gives you unparalleled access into all kind of state transitions that are happening in the box. Uh, we, we even have you know, in-house tools that we have built that leverage these APIs to present uh, a, a console view into all the minute uh, transactions that are happening inside the system uh, to, to be able to browse the operational state of the system uh, as, as, as it exists uh, in its core true form. Yeah, that's great. I mean, you know, uh, obviously our users are, are going to love that where they can get in and, and really take advantage of the system, even with their own applications, um, where, you know, those applications can go in. That information is there. We use it. We, prevent it, we present it uh, to, to the users so they can take full advantage of it and get more value out of the system. Um, so that was, uh, that was great information, VJ. I really appreciate your time today. Um, I found it useful. I hope everybody else found it useful. And, you know, stay tuned. We will have additional vlogs in the future that dig into uh, some additional aspects of the system that, that we find important and that will be important to you. So, you know, thanks again, VJ. This has been great. Thanks, Rick. Pleasure talking to you as always. You too. Have a great day.